we're going to look at three steps to MS build with Docker. Now I have a blog post out for this already and what you can do is run through the three steps and that's what we're going to do right now. Starting with cloning this GitHub repository GUID generator. What it will do is give you a web endpoint that you can hit in a browser and get back GUIDs. So th the crux of the matter here is that we're going to build our code with MS Build rather than with Visual Studio. Visual Studio is fine in our development environment, but as soon as we want to build out continuous integration and work in teams, we need to start building our assets in an automated way. Now, I've already built out a MS Build container and pushed that to the Docker Hub. If you're wondering how I put that together, I've included that in the blog post. Um, there's no need for you to run through this yourself, although if you want to fine tune it, please do. Now, once we've got that MS Build image together, we've customized it, we can go on to step two, which is to create a Docker file. Now, this Docker file will copy in all of the current directory to a build folder. It will then invoke a new get restore to make sure ASP.NET and any dependencies are in place. Then go on to launch MS build and here I've specified the solution name. Okay, so let's try that out. GUID generator assets. Every time we do a, um, a step or every time we see a layer in these files, what's effectively happening is um, a brand new Hyper-V instance is being fired up. And so when you're running on Windows 10, you might see a few seconds delay between each step. If you can combine certain steps together, like here, you'll find that you'll get your build done quicker. So that was the traditional Docker file that depended on us manually building our bin folder. The new one that I want to show you is uh, just here, build.dockerfile. And I've started to put a script together, which will go ahead and build the, um, the image. This step here is copying all the source code from Git into the build folder. We're now running a new get restore. This will connect to the internet. New get restore has just completed. That um, Hyper-V VM is getting closed down and a new one will get started up. Inside that one, we'll be running MS Build itself. And at the end of that step, the container image in that layer will contain all of the DLLs that we need to run our application. The third step will be for us to extract those from the um, from the container and put them into a new one that's got IIS already. So that's finished and we've now got an image called GUID generator assets in our library. We can create a container from that without actually starting it up. And I already have that there from earlier. So let's delete it. And what we'll do is create a container again. We'll look with Docker PS and we see that it's not actually running, but it does exist. And once we've created a container, we can copy files out. So this command will copy the files to my C build from C build GUID generator bin into the local directory. So if we were to look just before GUI generator, we shouldn't have a bin directory. 
Okay, we do have one. Let's remove it. Okay, now it's not found. We will launch the um, the copy command. And so right now, that container, although it exists, has never been started. We could effectively delete it. We're looking in the bin directory, the files have been copied in. And so now we have created and built those files without opening Visual Studio. The last step is to use the existing Docker file that we had from our last tutorial and uh, just run that in. So there's the docker file and I actually have um, a PowerShell script which does all of this in one shot. So the first thing it does is make sure we've got rid of the bin folder. It then makes sure we don't have the old assets container. We run in a build. If you have any HTTP proxy set, it will use that. We then create a container copy the assets out and build the final container just like we would have done before. Let's run it again. So those are the first few steps. Now we are building our IIS container, copying in the code that we've built. Let's now run up the container. So the image is called GUI generator 0.1. And we'll just check what port that's running on. That exposes port 80. So we'll just do straight conversion there. Now we also want to run this in the background and let's give it a name. The difference between Windows 10 and Windows 2016 at the moment is that when you run a container it will get its own IP address and that's what you need to access it with, with Windows 10. In 2016 any, bind mounting, any binding of ports you do like this will mean that port 80 will become available on local host just like in the Linux experience. So let's do an inspect on the container. I'm on Windows 10 here. This is the IP address it's provided. So if we access this on port 80 and then put value API slash values, IIS will start up and once it's running, we'll get back a GUID and we can hit that as many times as we want. So there we go. What we've done is taken a pre-existing Visual Studio project from source control from Git. It had no binaries. We've then used a container, Windows container with MS build to build a bin folder. That bin folder has been extracted from Docker and then we've built an IIS container which contained our application.